finally, some positivity at the tune. <laughs> Yes, yes, people, welcome back to the Magpie Channel TV. And we've got some great positive news to bring you this evening for a welcome, much needed change. Now, I've been too busy making enchiladas, just scrammed a lot there to bring you this video. But we're here, got to bring you, got to bring you the news because, as I've said in the title, we have to talk about these accounts and how gullible people are, mainly on social media and on X and everything else where it originated and why you should not, you should never basically believe them because they haven't got a clue they really really don't and it's satisfying really this because you just especially with social media you get all these trolls and everything and you get all this grief and everything and then you get these people who are attention seeking and they think they're now what they're talking about when really like i said they haven't got a scooby and they just put it out there for likes and attention and it gathers a lot of pace to be fair it's happened twice in the past week with newcastle it happens all the time and some of these have got loads of followers now and you just think why are these, how stupid have you got to be to follow these people? Do you not think it would have came out from at least a journalist that it has done tonight, and it did last night to be fair, uh, we'll talk about how it developed and stuff soon, or just wait for it to come from Sky Sports or the club directly. But these people, that, that are, they haven't even got names. They haven't even got names. It's not their actual name on the account. It's not their actual picture. It's always just like a, a random two, a two name, do you know what I mean? Or Newcastle, East Stand News or something, or, you know... Jordy voice sort of I mean, I don't know, I don't follow them, but you see them all the time, and people then message me saying, oh, okay, you seen this? Can you believe this? Like, last night, can you believe this? Gordon's out six, seven months. We got that info right before we're going to go live on the podcast, and then we were saying, you know, break time is what I was saying. Keg was saying, hold the brakes, you know, it's it, we don't know if it's true or not yet. Let's not get carried away. It's just sheer speculation, and we just touched on the fact and joked that he might be out for that long, but we both said, I don't think he will be. I would have thought, originally, seeing that injury from Anthony Gordon... It looked bad, especially when the physio decided to snap his knee. That's when it looked even worse. It went from one to two months to three to four. But obviously, it looked really bad at the time. Eddie Howe, as usual, again, <laughs> you, you can't believe Eddie Howe a word either, by the way. We've seen that in his press conferences all season regarding injury news and that. And you've seen it from his post-match at Chelsea. He's like, oh, I really bad this one. Not looking good. Not looking good. And then other times, basically, reverse psychology from Eddie Howe. Because other times when he said, oh, I should be fine, I, he'll be out. Like Harvey Barnes special. Or he'll be coming back soon. Joe Willick and he's out for months. This time with Anthony Gordon, Eddie Howe after a Stamford Bridge defeat, was saying, ah, it looks really badly. It's not looking good at all. Uh, phew, could be a long-term one. That let everyone feel in speculation that he could miss the next month, maybe the rest of the season. And then obviously last night on Tuesday, he had accounts on Twitter. These in the nose, ITKs, in the knobs, more like, in the knobheads. Eh? I haven't got a clue, man. These are coming out saying, oh, he's out for six, seven months. And then everybody, like wildfire, it's going ballistic, losing the plot. Cancel the season now. It's a write-off. Can you believe it? And to be fair, I, I, there is a pinch here where you think, bloody hell, that just summons our season, doesn't it? Anthony Gordon, obviously the the real crazy part of it, that was you have to laugh if you don't cry type of thing, was Anthony Gordon doing an interview on the weekend saying, I'm always available. The medical team don't know who I am. They never see us. I'm, I'm always fit and ready. And to be fair, he was right at the time. He's only missed one game this season, and that was through suspension. But now... He did that interview two days later. He looks like he's really torn his knee ligaments. He goes off injured against Chelsea in front of a watching Gareth Southgate. But tonight, the obviously positive news, well, it was actually last night. So all these rumours, six months he's out for, all of this, people melt down, going, going crazy, can't believe it. Oh my God, right the season off. And then at the time as well, to be fair, and credit to Lee Ryder, now you know he's, uh, he's fine, actually. You know, he's avoided long-term damage and he, he's going to be pretty good short-term. He, it could have been a lot worse and he... He looks like he's came out pretty well, to be fair. That's what Lee Rado was saying last night. He was saying he hasn't sustained a long-term injury. There's no real damage or tear there. And he, he could obviously miss a couple of games, but it's not going to be six months. In the last couple of hours, you've had Craig Cope from Daily Mail jumping on this. And then he's now saying it's been confirmed to him that he is all right. Anthony Gordon could even be involved in the next game for Newcastle at Man City or in the next fortnight for England. Now, the squad gets announced tomorrow for the three lines. For those upcoming friendlies against Brazil and Belgium, like I said before, Gareth Southgate was at Stamford Bridge watching Anthony Gordon, watching the likes of Cole Palmer and that as well. Not Sean Longstaff. Knee chance. Couldn't get an England B team, that gun. But never mind. What I'm saying is let's focus on the positivity tonight. And that is Anthony Gordon. And then England's Chiefs have also contacted Newcastle United to ask about 
his fitness to ask about that injury and how he's getting on. So the England camp, like I said last night in the podcast, he was on the verge of getting called up. Finally, Southgate had seen the light and he is actually going to pick a player on form. All the rumours, everything I was hearing was that he was going to get selected on Thursday, finally, for England. So now it was devastating that he got that injury at Stamford Bridge, came off, but hopefully... If they're getting good word back from Newcastle and the physio department and everything else, <laughs> not sure I trust them either. But if you're getting word back, I wouldn't want them to deal with my knees or anything, to be fair. If you've got a bad arm, bad back or anything, you avoid them at all costs. But uh, aye, just a little joke there, but it did look like he was just mashing them up, didn't it, the physio for Gordon. Obviously, our injury record this season has been honking. Absolutely ridiculous. The most days missed through injuries at the two in the Premier League by a good margin as well. So aye, Gordon, though, hopefully... Gets that deserved England call up tomorrow. Hopefully he's fit enough. That's the main thing. We don't want him going off with Southgate and the boys and getting injured at Wembley or getting injured at St George's Park training or aggravating it or getting anything worse. That's the last thing we need. So if he's fit and well, then great. Good luck to him. Hope he, hope he can get that call up. And especially, I hope, he can play on Saturday because if the task wasn't hard enough going to Manchester City in the FA Cup quarter-final, it's a lot harder without your arguably player of the season for me and Anthony Gordon, the amount of goals and assists He's contributed for, so it'd be amazing if he's fit for City. I'd be quite surprised if he can get it in the England camp and at least mix with them and then maybe play in the second match against Belgium or get some minutes here and there. That would be great and set him up nicely for the Euros. But most importantly, I think for me, is that he's back ASAP for Newcastle United. Like I said, Man City on Saturday, great if he's ready. If not, if he's there for West Ham in what is a massive game on the 30th of March. Huge, that lunchtime kickoff. Literally need to win that game right in the mix for European football. West Ham are 7th, I think, we're 10th, you know, there's a few points difference at max, so we need to win that game at home. Gordon, if he's ready for that, unreal, fantastic, that's what we need. I'm really hoping this is the positive news we've been waiting for, because it feels like a lot has been negative lately with our form, performances, all, all this Eddie Howe stuff, you know, gathering momentum about him being under pressure and everything, and to be fair, the other night was awful. So, to have a bit of positivity for a change is very, very nice, it's welcome, we need it. And it would be a big boost because, <laughs> I tell you what, if Gordon was ruled out for six months, if he was ruled out for the rest of the season, that would have been a nightmare considering our forward options with Wilson pretty much out for the season. Isaac, we know he's injury prone. If he took a knock, would literally be playing Murphy up front, man. You know, or Miggy, Fabian Shaw at this point. So it's a huge relief that hopefully the news we are hearing about Anthony Gordon is true from journalists saying, you know, it's not as feared as it was at first sight there was thinking it could be long term it could be a bit of damage a couple of months never going to be six months but a couple of months could have been looking bad for Newcastle United and Anthony Gordon but thankfully those scans were revealed that he is much better doing well and he is going to be on track for a return to the tune very soon and like I said maybe even England for all so again when you see these in the new accounts and all these people hiding behind logos and bloody names and everything you know it's crazy man and they're just making up absolute bollocks and people believe it i don't have the boat followers or what they've done but i think the original accounts that posted it about gordon have now deleted it like a lot of other people have because people jumped on it as well and, oh god come on you go out for this and people you know talking about it making videos and posts and everything else and you just think don't do it but at least wait for a half decent source not some made up twitter name Surely not some made-up X-handle, uh, fucking Timebridge 2012 or something. You know what I mean? Who cares about this? You know, you've got to wait until at least someone comes out. And like, listen, the Chronicle have got things wrong before. I've got things wrong before. Craig Hope's got plenty wrong before. Everyone gets things wrong. But you've got to wait until at least somebody who's a bit credible uh, puts it out there. And like I said when we did the podcast last night, no journalists were even talking about that at all. Someone would have picked up on it at least and said, oh, this could be happening. It never happened, and thankfully, that's not the case. I'm really buzzing for Gordon, obviously, first of all, for Newcastle fan, that he'll hopefully be back in black and white very soon, scoring goals again, and push on for Europe, and who knows, cup upset maybe on, on Saturday night, if he's fit enough to get involved there. And then for England as well, man, I know some people aren't bothered in that, but for me, I think it's only right Southgate picks the informed players, and I think it's only right that Gordon gets what his hard graft deserves, and that is a call-up to the England team. Let me know in the comments below what you just make the Anthony Gordon news. Huge relief, I'm sure. Subscribe to the Magpie Channel TV. Give this one a big thumbs up. And I'll see you on the next one.